Good morning, rockhounds. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of scarns, with a special focus on those located in Monmouth Township, Ontario. This region, rich in mineral history and geologic complexity, hosts some of the most intriguing scarn systems in the province, and possibly even the country. The area sits just west of Bancroft, a place well known for pegmatites and scarns, for which it has become the self-dubbed mineral capital of Canada. Let's begin by laying out what a scarn is. At its simplest, a scarn is a metasomatic rock formed when hot, chemically active fluids from a magmatic intrusion interact with carbonate-rich rocks like limestone or marble. This reaction results in the formation of new minerals, often minerals of economic value. But in Monmouth Township, scarns are much more than textbook examples. They're historical mines, exploration targets, and geological puzzles waiting to be decoded by those who are interested in the minerals that they give rise to. What rockhounds wouldn't want to tap into a scarn and haul out lovely scarn-based crystals, zircons, garnets, quartz, and diopside? Indeed, that is what we are doing at Dark Star. We are very fortunate to have found a scarn of our own. There's something from pocket after pocket. Did you find something? What's that? I just seen the weird angle. Oh. Right top of the rocks. And yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that, eh? Feldspar. Very nice. Nice little find. Add it to the pile. So last video when I talked about value added for an interesting matrix, this calcite here is almost, I wouldn't call it transparent, but definitely translucent. Um, it's got all the, the crystal edges on it. Uh, and then there's quartz along the edges there. You can see there's quartz. So, I mean, that's definitely an interesting combination, right? And again, it sits... No way. There's one inside there. There's a calcite crystal inside where Mark is. He says it's big as a baseball and a perfect crystal. So this is where these are coming. And the quartz with the um, gothite on the outside... Um, is coming out as well, like just phenomenal. Yeah, what a we what have a to get in deeper. That puppy's not coming in one piece. Like yeah, that. let's avoid it. Later let's, down the road, we'll get yes, it. yes, it's edible. It's just later down the road. Yeah. So there are some local sites of interest. Several notable scarns in the Bancroft area. Some that jump to mind are the Bessemer mine, uh, once mined for uh, iron, the Dino mine. York River Scarn, famous occurrence, uh, the Silver Crater Mine, uh, and the Mayo Mine. So each of these represents a unique variant of the Scarn forming process, but all share a few important traits. So Monmouth Scarns are mostly calcic Scarns, meaning that they're rich in calcium bearing minerals. These formed when granitic and cyanitic intrusions, that is types of igneous rock, forced their way into surrounding limestone and marble releasing superheated fluids. The resulting chemical exchange transformed the original rocks into scarns. Yeah. What do we need? You know where my poker went? I had a poker here. Uh, I think I may have a poker in the box here in a second. One poker. Well, my maybe, poker. maybe it is yours, yeah. Uh, I do things like that. I know. No way. Mark's just said um, it's huge, and there's another huge one underneath it. So we're finding these calcite things going on on the floor of this uh, whatever it is that we're uh, accessing here. So minerals coming out of these scarns. Historically, they've been mined for a variety of base metals, iron, chromium, and then, of course, we've got things like uranium, fluorite, apatite, rare earths. This mineralogical diversity is a hallmark of SCARN environments, and in Monmouth Township, the zoning of its SCARN bodies offers a clear record of the thermal and chemical gradients that shape them. So one of the most fascinating aspects of SCARNs is their concentric zoning. Imagine an onion-like structure forming around the intrusive body. 
Each shell reflects different physical and chemical conditions during formation. So the further you get away from the intrusion, the less scarn-like the formation becomes. So right at the center, closest to the intrusion, this is the high temperature, lowest water activity zone. It features coarse grain textures and is dominated by pyroxenes such as Hedenbergerite and diopside, along with various uh, garnets, Groschler in particular. These minerals form where metasoma metasomatism was most intense, that is the movement of the superheated water. The retrograde zone, that's the middle zone. Uh, that's what we appear to have tapped into um, in the dark star claim. Now as the system cools and fluid chemistry evolves, retrograde minerals take over. This zone hosts amphiboles like actinolite and tremolite, along with quartz, magnetite and various sulfides like pyrite. Interestingly, this is also where ore minerals such as gold, copper and tungsten tend to accumulate, often in association with magnetite or sulfur veins. And then at the very outer edge, the scarn front, the outermost shell, this is furthest from the intrusion. It lies where the original marble or limestone is only partially altered. This zone is often relict carbonate and marks the outer limit of this metasomatic alteration. The formation of these zones is largely controlled by fractures, which act as highways for fluids to flow. These fractures determine not only the extent of met metasomatism, but also the symmetry and directionality of the scarn body. You'll often find that the geometry of the scarn mirrors the structural fabric of the host rocks, and as we speculate by the crystals that we are finding, we appear to have cut under the scar in front as our trenches pierce the cliffside and run directly into the retrograde zone. For us, there are the quartz and base metal markers that confirm this. So, we are, in actual fact, not all-knowing in what we do. Uh, we have to research a lot, and as we come across things through the, the weeks and the things that we find, we often have to go on the internet ourselves or reach out to others for advice or thoughts. Um, on what we're finding. But um, something that's really jumping out at us is super interesting is the way the iron is, uh, the inclusions in particular are evolving. And uh, Mark has this very interesting theory that our amethyst is coming from directly underneath the scar in front. Uh, initially, we were just thinking everything was laid up out in a somewhat of a haphazard way. But the scar in front at one time came down in front of this particular cliff face. And as the, um, for some reason, uh, the, the rocks had been removed from the front of the cliff face, and that's where we were finding the amethyst, so directly underneath the scar in front before we got deeper. But again, there's also this connection with the inclusions, whereby they change. Um, you know, magnetite uh, progressed on to gothite, the skins on the outside of the spheres. Then we're going on to uh, what we call the, the Martian pumpkins. So that is this bright orange spheres that we're finding, the limnite. And the limnite, it often evolves from gothite uh, in a very little oxygen in it. So yeah, it's all kinds of mysteries, all kinds of things cropping up. Any theories, feel free to fire them out to us. One thing I gotta say here, those crystals in there are amazing. So they look to have points on them like about that big. They're loose and uh, I'm thinking if they're loose, maybe they're just calcite crystals stacked together, but not joined to each other, and then we'd have double terminations on them. But we've decided, um, just because we don't want to wreck them by trying to reach to them, we're going to finally, we'll just keep digging as we're digging now until we get closer to them. Greetings, rock hounds from uh, the Dark Star claim. Um, so here's the plan. Here's the plan with this particular fissure. Um, well, actually, it's not a fissure, it's a scar. What were we going to do, Mark? I can't. What, what did you say? What were we going to do with it? A generator and a jackhammer. Yeah. And how's that going to help? Unlock that puppy. We can get in. Yeah, exactly. We don't want to extract those calcite crystals without uh, making sure that uh, we're not breaking them in any way whatsoever. Right? They are valuable. There's calcite, and then there's quartz underneath it. 
um, quartz on top of it. Quartz on top of it. Oh man, it's it's a it's just a big scene.